Okay, okay. Recording now. So, uh, hello to uh, the audience, which is definitely there, and my lovely guests, who actually are definitely here. Uh, and uh, welcome to Talk of the Devil, the Royal Edition. Uh, I'm your host. <laughs> Indeed, it is the royal family themed episode of Talk of the Devil. And I am here with my uh, three lovely contestants. Uh, let's go around the circle. Uh, first off, Joe, introduce yourself. Hi. I think I'm Proctor. Like, I appreciate it, but like, no. <laughs> yeah. Lovely stuff. And Tristan, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Tristan, and as all of our listeners can see, I, I am I am very very um, well hatted today. I have my hat on. I, I just want you to know that. <laughs> what kind of hat is it? Do you know it's a fedora? Oh, oh yeah, lovely. Forget that. Well, well, excellent. Eh? Uh, and finally. Uh, George Collins, introduce yourself. Good day. Hello. I'd just like to point out, I, I haven't finished the crown yet, so um, I don't want any spoilers. I, I, I don't know what happens to Diana. I don't know what happens to Diana, and um, I'm not sure of the fate of Winston Churchill. So if you'd keep that quiet, I'd, I'd be very grateful. <laughs> uh, you've got to get up to date with the with the Meghan Markle subplot. <laughs> I thought this was a royal episode. Ooh. Oh, oh, I see. I see. This is this is going places already. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, well, uh, the satire has begun. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I mean, I think I, th I don't think we're going to get, um, you know, sued or. Or um, you know, banned from national radio. Uh, because... I don't know. I, I think the Queen's lawyers are probably listening to us right now. <laughs> or the Queen herself. Uh, yes, hello, the Majesty. Queen is a known fan of of, of Lucy. <laughs> That's not actually true. I, I should mention. And uh, we 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 will not be drawn on whether or not we endorse her. Or maybe we will. <laughs> Well, well, yes, well, well, just in case you are listening, Your Majesty, hello, uh, and uh, let's jump in to the first round of Talk of the Devil, uh, which Her Majesty would undoubtedly be very good at, because this round is a true or false round, where I'm going to read out three different stories related to the royal family, and uh, you guys are each going to guess which, uh, you're go each going to guess whether they are true or false. And so, my first story is, uh, coming up, here it is. BBC reporter mistakenly tweets that the Queen has died. <laughs> now, now, uh, this is known to be a, a big, big no-no, um, especially on the radio. If you're if you're ever broadcasting on Bailrig FM, you have to ensure that you never say the Queen has died because that violates <laughs> Ofcom reg. It does. It violates Ofcom regulations uh, because, by law, uh, only the BBC can announce uh, first that the Queen has died. They have to be the first people to announce it. Um, so yes, fun fact of the day. However, luckily we are not broadcasting on uh, national radio, so we can say the Queen is dead however much we want. But, uh... It doesn't mean that she is. I, I was going to say sadly, but I, 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 I can't say whether that's sad or not. It, it, uh... Well, well... We, we will undoubtedly have a deep political discussion on the <laughs> benefits versus the drawbacks of the monarchy after the episode has concluded, or perhaps during the song breaks. But, for now, <laughs> let's focus on this article. So, 
Yes, a BBC reporter mistakenly tweeted that the Queen had died and faced disciplinary action. The confusion came because the BBC was holding a training rehearsal for the case of the death of the Queen, and therefore there were some monitors in the building displaying the quote-unquote news that the Queen was dead. The journalist, seeing these mon monitors, did not ask anyone before tweeting Elizabeth has died at BBC World. However, after realising her mistake, the journalist hurriedly deleted that tweet and then tweeted, FALSE ALARM! So, yes, true or false, <laughs> what do we think? I think I remember something like this happening. Right. Well, um, I, I, I don't know if it was exactly as you've retold it, but I do remember something, some faux pas like that happening. Okay. Perhaps. perhaps. Well, I, I'm going to say that um, in in the realms of, of royal journalism, I think anything goes. I, I, I think I'm just going to say that they're all true, because uh, I, I don't think that there's anything that I'd put past either the royals or the royal journalists or the newspapers. I feel like... They'll, they'll report anything, and uh, anything can happen. So I reckon this did happen, and that's why I'm saying that it's true. Right. Okay, and finally, uh, Joe. Yes. I'm going to go down to ground and say it far. I was like, at first I was thinking, yeah, might be true, because I, I can see someone in a mistake like that. But then, I don't think, and I feel like we would have heard of, well, maybe we wouldn't have heard about that. Probably not. But yeah, I'm just going to go then to go in and take part. Yeah, very wise. Uh, that, that is a tactic which uh, is a good way to get ahead of your opponents, because you cannot get ahead of your opponents by simply going with the same answers that they are going with. Uh, so, uh, Yes, uh, so now uh, Tristan and George are both saying true, and Joe is saying false. Uh, is everyone okay with that answer? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could imagine myself making this kind of mistake. <laughs> right, right. Uh, okay, so it's a, it's a compassionate true from Tristan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I must say, the story is true. Uh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, yes, a point to George and to Tristan. So, yes, it, uh, that's 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 just what happened. Uh, but uh, yes, yes. So, a training, a training day, uh, and and uh, uh, the 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 news apparently looked so real that this journalist was totally duped by it. So, to be honest, I mean, it, it was a pretty good rehearsal for the eventuality of the Queen's death. <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, they, ma they managed to fool somebody. So, yes. Uh, I mean, let, let's, just, let's just hope that they don't do a rehearsal for, like, nuclear war, and then, like, <laughs> somebody sets off nukes in, in retaliation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but th there, is, there is something very sad, is that uh, I understand that when the Queen does die, the BBC won't be able to broadcast any comedy for a while, um, <laughs> so it's, it's going to be a disaster, or, although I was going to say it's going to be a disaster, but everyone will have no choice but to listen to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Let's assassinate Still the, the archives. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, lovely stuff! Yes, indeed. We, yes, we will. Ha we will send out the link to the Lucy Comedy YouTube channel uh, the moment we hear the news. Uh, but, but uh, yes. So, um, on to our next story. Uh, here is the headline: DJ sacked for pulling the plug on boring. Queen's Christmas message. <laughs> Indeed. Here's... What, like the Queen's speech? 
Indeed. Yeah. Yes. So, here's the story. A radio presenter for the Birmingham radio station BRMB has been sacked after he stopped broadcasting the Queen's traditional Christmas Day speech and switching over to Wham's Last Christmas. Two words. Boring, he said, before saying, now, from one queen to another, referencing George Michael, a singer of Wham, who was openly gay. So he interrupted the Queen's speech halfway through to play Last Christmas uh, by Wham. Uh, yes. Gosh. <laughs> Indeed. So uh, is that... Is is anyone that stupid? Is that true? Well, it's it's, 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 it's Birmingham, isn't it? Anything can happen in Birmingham. <laughs> I um, think it would be a shame that he got sacked. Oh, I think it's justified, incredibly so. <laughs> I see what's going to happen here, George. You're 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 the good cop or the bad cop, depending on what your position is, I suppose. Well, I think he shouldn't have been sacked. I think that's a shame. But I also think it's probably true. And I'm going to give a good reason why, not just because it's very believable and I definitely believe someone would do it, but also because I, I can't imagine John making up that one queen to another um, <laughs> joke. Well, oi. I... Uh, Oi, oi, what? I, I think I'm all right at the, the old radio one-liners. Thank you very much. You're uh, very good at them. I, I just can't uh, imagine you coming up with that one specifically. Ah, ah, interesting. Well, but, mm. hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> but I, I could be double bluffing you. You but, could. <laughs> however, yes. yes. I think you're true, John. Wait, no, I think you made it up, John. Oh. It's probably. Well, I'm also kind of trying to matter game the system. And, like, think, uh, maybe, maybe trying to, like, just, uh, just trying to double bluff it and also, like, mm. there's got to be at least one false story, otherwise, if it's all true, then, well. So I'm just going to go far for that reason. All oh, right. I see. I see. Because I can't imagine anyone would be that disrespectful to the Queen in any position whatsoever, especially in a position like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, that's, that's the difference, is that just like with the last one, um, with, with the journalist, I can relate to this person. It's the sort of thing that I could picture myself doing in a moment of weakness, <laughs> thinking, I don't, no one will fire me, you know, it's Christmas. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, wow. I think it's, um, I hate to say it, but I think it's probably true. <laughs> Painful, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just going to be me going and done the grain every single time. <laughs> mm. Right. Yes. So, um, this man's hunger for wham could have been too great to resist. Uh, but, uh, yes, so, uh, Tristan and George are again going with true, and Joe oh. is again going with false. Uh, yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, the story is true. Oh. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed! What a guy! <laughs> well, I my mean... new hero. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, det I'm, I'm, I'm rather, I'm rather glad that this episode is virtual because I'm sure that George would be giving devil eyes uh, to Tristan <laughs> from across the studio. Uh, I mean, it's so good far to have from, from, from hearing these stories, there are multiple people that I've, I'd have put in the tower already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, yes, yes, yes. We have got we have got the angel and the devil. Uh, who is which one? Though? Which John? Mm. John, you need to decide. It's up to you. Uh, um, I would, I would never, 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 never. 
uh, be so Does divisive. Does our friendship mean so little that you won't betray the monarchy for it? <laughs> um, the monarchy is all I need. I do not need friendship. I have oh. Prince Philip. <laughs> uh, damn straight. Uh, so, indeed. Uh, so, uh, that is the penultimate story, but I have one more true slash false story for you guys. And here it is. Uh, here's the headline. Palace Guard says, Bloody hell, your majesty, I nearly shot you. After seeing the queen on a late night stroll. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, here, here is the story. The queen was taking a walk late at night when she was spotted one of her many armed guards. The guard, unfortunately, was unaware that the queen often takes these late night walks and thought she was an intruder. He shouted, who's that? only to find it was the Queen herself. Bloody hell, your majesty, I nearly shot you, he is reported to have said. So, indeed, that is... So, uh, yeah, what, what people think. Is, is, is that, is that, uh, feasible? No, uh, Brian? I kind of... Uh, uh, um, I just, I'm just gonna stick with my with with my false friend. Like just keep just keep saying false until it works. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, yes, what about Tristan and George? Uh, I think I think. Well, I was thinking, can I relate to this person? And I was thinking, <laughs> well. I mean, maybe I could I could swear at the Queen. That's possible, but uh, I I feel like I, I wouldn't have held back if 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 I had been in in the given the opportunity to to shoot the Queen and make it look like it was an accident, you know. So so I I don't know if I can relate to this guard so much. So I I'm leaning towards. False. And also, it occurs to me that this would be a very easy way for someone to get onto the inside of the monarchy, becoming a palace guard. Uh, I'm assuming there are safeguards, mm. but uh, if this dude nearly shot the queen, then those safeguards can't be very good. Uh, so I I'm going to mm. give the monarchy the benefit of the doubt by saying that I have a bit more confidence in their safeguards than that. Ah, oh, right. So in that case, are you going with false? Yes, yes, I am. George, yes, what do you think? Um, I'm going to say false um, for a number of reasons. Um, primarily, you don't speak to the Queen unless spoken to. Um, I spe would. Especially, <laughs> on, especially on sentry duty. And also, they're not actually armed, many of the guards. So, I, f I find it hard to believe, so I'm going to say false. Okay, but but let me put it to you, George. What if the Queen said, "Oh, hello, I didn't see you there," and then the the guard, having been spoken to, of course, then said, "Oh, bloody hell! I nearly shot you." Uh, I, that could happen. That will be within the rules. Well, he would be he would be charged for such blasphemous behaviour in front of Her Majesty. I'm sure. Um, and that, 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 <laughs> I think and the still, Queen's seen worse that... behaviour. And that still, <laughs> and that still doesn't uh, sort the solution to the problem. They're, they are not, fairly often not armed Queen's guards, anyway. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm. Right. What? So yes, false. Well, okay. Are we all going with false then? Da. Yes, da. sir. Right. Okay. It is true. Indeed, the the story is true, and I shall po paste a link to it in the chat. It's true. It wow. is. Oh my! <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> let me let me let me uh copy the link. Uh, yeah yeah. So um, the, it 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 happened. I I I I do not <laughs> I do not know what else to say. But um yeah uh. This this guard was like 
or he he thought she was a very uh, a very old and well dressed intruder, and uh, you know, very nearly opened fire on her. But thankfully, or unthankfully, uh, if you're Tristan, he didn't. But yes. So. Uh, why didn't I choose to go down the grain that time? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Tristan left. He was unhappy that. The, the oh, he's done it. He's that easy. He's done a Piers Morgan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Piers Morgan of Lucy. <laughs> Gosh, that oh. is. I, I, I'm honestly shocked at that. I can't believe it. It must be. It must have been police. I reckon. Hmm. Oh, well, what does it say? Well, I don't know, actually. This is incredible. Indeed. Indeed, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a story. Uh, that's, that's a good find, John. <laughs> good old Uncle Reddit. Hey, Tristan's back. I'm back. Oh, lovely jubbly. Uh -huh. Piers Morgan moment is over. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, George, George called you the Piers Morgan. Lucy, when you left abruptly, what? how can I be the the Piers? Mo I'm going to say I I'm I'm fully behind uh, Megan, so I'm ah. Oh. <laughs> then, then you're the anti Piers Morgan, the the liberal version of him. But yeah, <laughs> mm. oh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, so yes, that is that is that that is the um the story. A guard nearly opened fire on uh, on the queen. Um, he thought she was an intruder. Uh, and at three a.m. he shouted, "Who is that?" But it was actually the queen who uh, was struggling to sleep apparently, and so occasionally goes out for a late night stroll. Uh, in the palace grounds. But, um, yes. And, um, uh, yes. So, that, uh, that, that is that. And, um, we shall now go into our, uh, first song break. But, before we go into that song break, I have a, uh, question for you guys. The creative question. So, um, my, while the song is playing, you guys will be dreaming up an answer to, the, to this question, and the most creative answer will win. And the question is, what would his punishment have been if he had fatally shot the Queen that night? <laughs> so, uh, yes. So, that is my question to you guys. And now, now for the song break. Now, uh, for our listeners, the song breaks all tie in to one big game, which is uh, the fact that all three songs uh, are hinting at a story that has been in the news. Um, uh, well, in this case, it's just, it's not a story that has been in the recent news. It is, in fact, uh, they're all hinting towards a fun fact about the royal family. So, uh, yes. All, all of these songs are hinting to a fun piece of trivia about the royal family, and the hint is either in the lyrics, in the song title, or in the name of the artist. And so now I am going to play you guys the uh, first song, which is the song Kiss by the artist Prince. So, yes. All right. Uh, so, yes, I will see you guys very shortly. Here is Kiss by Prince. See you soon, and don't forget to think of your creative answer. Hello. Howdy. Howdy. Alrighty, okay. So that was the song Kiss by the artist Prince. Uh, so, yes. Uh, so now, it is time for the creative answers round. So, 
uh, hopefully you guys have all uh, thought up of an answer for my question to you, which is what should the punishment be for the man, uh, for the guard, if he had accidentally killed the queen that night? So uh, I'm just going to randomise my list and uh, then we're going to go through your answers. And I've randomised my list and uh, first up, the first answer is Tristan. So what should the man's punishment be? Well, well, uh, I think that uh, George and I will agree that something really sort of old fashioned needs to be done to deal with this uh, this individual if if he's if he's only gone and shot and killed the queen. Um, mm. And I was thinking we we should bring back uh, a really old fashioned tradition that uh, I, I think is is quite cool, you know. And the old fashioned tradition is, you know. The person who who kills the monarch becomes the monarch. <laughs> That's right. That's oh, right. No. I'm here for King Jeff the First. <laughs> Coming. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's not easy being king. Probably. Well, actually, I think it probably is quite easy. But hey ho, <laughs> that's the rules, and um, that's what I think should happen. Right. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I really like that. Uh, King Jeff the first. Um, well, okay. Uh, so, uh, next up, uh, we've got Joe Woods. What do you think? Well, you're not going to believe this, but um, I think the person that killed the manor becomes the new manor. Could I did I did do that game of but, um, <laughs> Yeah, um, but like, yeah, so basically. Basically, I'm just going to add uh, uh, the royal family um, basically get thrown out of Buckingham Palace and whatever palace they, they live in, um, and, the, and the guard family becomes the oh. royal family. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Good right. luck with that. <laughs> and cheers, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's indeed. two one on. We need this guy to be the monarch. I, I think that's a democratic majority. <laughs> well, indeed, indeed, P perhaps. But let's first hear what George has to say. Well, well, at first, I thought something such such a hideous crime as this should be, you know, such a, should go with a hideous punishment, perhaps hung, drawn, and quartered. But then I thought, what's even worse than that? And I thought, oh, I know. Jerry. And I thought, what would be worse than that? Uh, something I would not wish upon my worst enemy. Um, appearing on the show Naked Attraction. Um, uh, <laughs> that is just oh, inhumane. It really is. I couldn't think of anything worse. Um, so, uh, first of all, I would make them appear on Naked Attraction. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Second of all, they would have to go to AA meetings. Um, Anti-Monarchists Anonymous, because I can't think of the worst bunch of people to be around regularly every Thursday evening when I should be at home watching Bake Off. Um, and then obviously you get to the inevitable being imprisoned at the Tower after those. I think that's a nice punishment for them. Okay, okay. So yeah, we've, we've got uh, we, we've got Go On Naked Attraction and uh, visit Alcoholics uh, Anti-Monarchists Anonymous with uh, other anti-monarchists, pr probably with Tristan amongst them. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> I, I'm a regular attendee of those meetings. <laughs> You'll get better one day. It hasn't helped so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. Uh, yes, and then we've got the two answers that um, the, uh, Jeff, the would-be killer, uh, should have become the new monarch. Which is very interesting. So, um, well, I must say, I I do think uh, for sheer um, for sheer creativity, uh, my my favourite answer is George's. I'm afraid. Thank you. <laughs> it's, all, it's also completely fair because then you wouldn't have pursued between us, between me and Tristan. <laughs> That might have also factored into why I chose George's answer, uh, because then I would have had to just like, yeah. Um, but yes, uh, so yes, 
uh, on to our next round, I think. Um, so, our second round is a round called uh, The Queen's Speech. Well, I just made up that name just now, but uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, what, what the round is, is uh, you are going to be the Queen for a little while, and you are going to deliver a speech as the Queen. And the speech that you're going to deliver is the speech for the state opening of Parliament. So, uh, for those who don't know, either the listeners or the uh, contestants, every year the Queen visits the Houses of Parliament and delivers a speech containing an outline for the policies and proposed legislation of the Parliament for the coming year and that is called the State Opening of Parliament. So, for instance, in the State o Opening of Parliament 2019, the Queen said, uh, and I quote, My government's priority is to deliver the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union. And she also said, My government will prioritise investment in infrastructure and world-leading science, research and skills to unleash productivity and improve daily life for communities across the country. Uh, so, yes, uh, that is what the speech uh, should sort of contain. And uh, what we're going to do is um, each of you is going to deliver a short, a very, very short state opening of Parliament. Just speak for, you know, however long you want. Uh, I'm going to say maximum two minutes. And then, uh, but also, one of you, uh, well, uh, no, so for, for each of you delivering the speech, you will have somebody uh, being your should have said -er. So, uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, so, uh, while Tristan is delivering his state opening of Parliament, Joe will be periodically saying should have said, uh, and then Tristan will change the the last thing he said um, uh, in accordance with the uh, improv game should have said. Uh, and so I will award points to my favourite speech and the, the, the two people who were involved in that speech, uh, in this case Tristan and Joe, would uh, both gain a point. Uh, if if that speech was my favourite, so yes, you're you're kind of uh, g getting into teams a little bit, a little bit. So um, yeah, so uh, Tristan will deliver a speech, and Joe will say should have said. Joe will deliver a speech for which George will say should have said, and George will deliver a speech for which Tristan will say should have said. Uh, so, <laughs> so yes, and. Uh, so yes, uh, imagine you are, uh, the Queen, and delivering your state opening of Parliament. Uh, are is we this all... for the, is, what, for, for what government is this? For the current government, or a different government? The current government, I... Current government, very sensible one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can't, we can't make them do things that uh, are particularly outlandish, or, or could we? Could we do things that are outlandish? You absolutely could. You can be as creative uh -huh. as you like. Yeah, it's just uh -huh. it's just my favourite speech that, uh, that that will win the point. You can do whatever you want in this speech. Uh, so yes, um, that is that is my idea. And uh, now uh, I am going to. I think, I think we shall have another song for you guys to think up of what you want your speeches uh, to contain. Uh, so, that is what we'll do. And uh, because because I'm aware that uh, it, it might not be might not be great to just, um, you know, have you try to improvise speeches on the spot. So, uh, we'll have another song. And the song is going to be another song as part of the um, the song game, and then you guys will improvise your speeches after the song. So, uh, let me play the song.
and I will see you guys after it plays. So the song that I'm going to play is called Rude by the artist Magic, and uh, you guys may be familiar with it. So yes, here it is. Saturday morning, jumped out of bed. Why you gotta be so rude? Lovely jumping. What a love, what a lovely song. <laughs> was it was it aimed at was it aimed at Tristan? Why have you got to be so rude from Her Majesty? <laughs> <laughs> she was there bopping along, thinking of Tristan. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, Her Majesty is definitely listening, uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and agrees. Um, but yes, um, right, so guys, uh, I have, uh, it is now time for the speeches of your state openings of Parliament, and um, so, as I said, um, uh, when, when Joe is doing his speech, George will be should have said him. When George is doing his speech, Tristan will be should have said him. And when Tristan is doing his speech, Joe will be should have said him. And I'm going to say, um, George, if you could go first. So, uh, <laughs> yes, take it away. Hello, my citizens of the country. Um, my government's first pledge is to reduce the amount of ready-made pasta sauces available in shops across the realm. Now, the reason for this is, it's pasta sauce. It's not that hard to make. You don't need to be buying ready-made pasta sauce full of salt, additives and stuff. It's, it's bad for you. And I want what's best for you as your queen. Um, now, following on from this, I want what's good for you. I pledge to cut down on... F my government, sorry, pledges to cut down on fake news. So that's good by Guardian. Should have said. I, I, I really want to increase the amount of fake news because I, I thrive for it. The stuff that says, you know... In my younger years, I was a bit of a slag. I love reading rumours like that in the mail. Ooh, gives me it gives me a bit of a chill on my spine. I just love the adrenaline rush. Um, so I pledge to cut down on fake news. Um, so that's goodbye Guardian, goodbye Daily Mail, and goodbye to any LUTG propaganda that says they're the best <laughs> performance society on campus. And um, because, as we all know, should have said LUTG is a very good society on campus, and <laughs> and. Um, and um, it's um, second best to Lucy, which I, I implore you to join. Should um, have said. <laughs> I say you shouldn't join Lucy because. Should have because said. You should join Lucy because it's the best society in Lancaster and in the north of England. <laughs> um, uh, my, uh, my government also pledges to big up Burns Night. There's nothing better than haggis, neeps and tatties on a cold night in winter. Um, and I think that's something we can all get behind. Um, I also pledge to bring back and, uh, well, sorry, I, I, to re to repeal the Hunting Act, um, brought in by uh, Blair and Brown, because it was a silly piece of legislation that really was a step back for animal welfare, if anything. And um, should with... have said, I can't say that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you should have said. <laughs> <laughs> I have to appease Morgan. Um, <laughs> um, Blair and Brown were all right to prime ministers with silly legislative choices. Um, and with these pledges, my government will do a good job for the for the for the country and the Commonwealth. And I will continue to serve you selflessly for the rest of my reigning career. Should have said. I will continue to serve you selflessly for the rest of my life. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, very good. Uh, Tristan, you There was a man. bit of a battle there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, um, uh, so now it is time for... Uh, ooh, Tristan, you're your speech. So, um, yes, uh, when you're ready, take it away. And, oh, and sorry, I should have, should have mentioned, Joe, you will be doing the should have said it for this one. Yeah. Awesome. Great. No problem. Lovely jubbly. Tristan, take it away. One, 
is very glad to be here at Parliament today <laughs> to open this year's sessions. One's, one is a, a bit tired uh, of, of coming to Parliament every year, but uh, one has very little choice. One's government is committed to belatedly realising that there is a pandemic on and that the citizens of the country should be compensated in some way for the inconvenience. <laughs> Therefore, one's government has not yet realised that there's a pandemic. Nevertheless, they have decided to introduce a policy that I am about to mention, which may go some way to persuading voters to like them a bit more. That policy is a free two-month trial of Spotify, because everyone loves music apart from one, for one does not uh, enjoy fun very much. One's government is also committed to building new homes. Five whole... <laughs> One's government has decided not to build any new homes. One's government <laughs> has instead decided to start publishing a weekly newsletter which will be posted directly to every citizen in the realm. And the newsletter will tell them about one's exploits. One's <laughs> government did not intend for the newsletter to be centred on oneself. However, one insisted. <laughs> one is finally glad that uh, the government has agreed to one's favourite policy of mandatory hat wearing. To be precise, one's government will be forcing all citizens to wear diamond-studded crowns just like oneself, so one will finally fit in to normal society. One's government will be banning the use of diamond crowns by ordinary people and peasants because one wants to feel more special. <laughs> one's government will, as a final note, be uh, introducing a new social media app called Torita, which will be... <laughs> Which which will be highly successful. We are we are very sure of it, and uh, the prime minister will be making all future broadcasts from this app. That is uh, my speech for for today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow because from now on, uh, one will be making speeches every day <laughs> because one does not feel that one gets enough airtime as it is. <laughs> And cut. And now from one queen to another. Uh, we... <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Uh, very well done to both of you. Uh, that was excellent. Uh, but now uh, we just have one more, and that is Joe. Your speech. Uh, for at whom? <clears throat> and uh, George, you will be should have setting Joe. So yes, take it away. So, my right honourable gentleman. Should have said. So, my dishonourable gentleman. Um, I believe that I, I, I'm putting down a policy that the Lancaster University Comedy Institute shall be made the national comedy show of the whole country. Yes. And that they should get a spot on late night TV on BBC's national TV. Hey, <laughs> hey. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, should said. And that they should have a pardon to say the Queen is dead whenever they want. Should have said. And they should have a pardon that says the Queen is immortal and will never die. <laughs> that is it. I had no further questions. I only, I only request that um, 
my dog get the immortality that I have over there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. I, I'm not I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh lovely. Well uh, so, those were very good speeches, and, um, so now it is just for me to choose, and I do not know, uh, I, I very, I very much liked the war, um, but I, I think, I think I must say the one, the one which, uh, en entertained me the most was Tristan's one, the, um, especially with the newsletter, which I liked a lot, so, uh, yes, um, well, uh, tri well done, Tristan. You get a point for that. Uh... One is very thankful. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. Uh, no worries. I could just speak like the Queen for the rest of the, <laughs> the show. Uh, you will get a. Um, actually, actually, no, no. That's. I was going to say you would get a no, point. No, you for doing don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Well. Uh, Okie cokey. So that is uh, the end of that round, and we're going to jump in to our third and final song break, which will happen before our last round of the game. And uh, yes, uh, so the um, uh, that's what's going to happen. And now uh, I just have uh, a another question for you guys to answer uh, while the song is playing, and this question is kind of a uh, creative answer type question but it's actually a question which does have a genuine answer uh so the question is why is the royal family uh wh why do they not use the words perfume or the word toilet perfume and toilet two words that the royal family does not use and uh uh, if either of you has the answer, uh, after the song has played, do share it. But uh, and uh, and if it, it if it is the correct answer, you will get two points. But if you don't know the answer, just make up an answer. And um, if nobody has the correct answer, I will simply give a single point to whoever gives me the most creative answer. Uh, so yes, hopefully that makes sense. So uh, it per wait, it perfume and... And toilet. Toilet, okay. Awesome. Uh, so yes. Uh, so, yes. Why does the royal family not use the words perfume and toilet? There is a real answer, but if you don't know it, just give me your most creative answer. And now for our third and final song, tying into the song game. This song is the song Cousin Kevin by The Who. That's Cousin Cousin Kevin by The Who. And I'm going to play it now. So see you guys all very, very soon. Awesome. Hello. Uh, that was Cousin Kevin by the band The Who. And um, I think we're going to go through now. Uh, does anyone know the answer to the news story um, th that all the three of these songs have been pointing towards? Could I ask what the second song was and by who? I didn't quite catch that. Uh it was the song Rude by the artist... Oh, that's it. Yes. By Magic. Uh, so, yes. Thank you. No worries. Uh, yes. Does anyone have any... It could be to do with... Uh, is it to do with, with, with weddings and marriage? It is. Oh, well, that's good. But also, I haven't got any further than that. <laughs> yeah. Is it anything to do with Mr. and Mrs. Markle? Uh, it is not. It is not pertaining to their relationship. I thought it might be. That might be too obvious. Yeah. Mm. I can't say I do. No. 
Okay. I don't know. Is it about Princess Diana? It is not. Uh, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's a. Uh, um, you think. Think older. Uh, those ones who who went and um uh de- what's the word where they abdicate? Yeah, that dude who abdicated the oh, throne. Okay. Is it about him? Uh, it is not. Edward VIII, uh, it is uh, uh, just a couple generations after him. King Kevin? <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it, is, it, is not, it is not King Kevin, although that does sound like the name of the guard who shot Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I support him. <laughs> it, is, it, is some, it is a very important figure in the royal family, a very important couple. In that family, the king and queen. Wait, Prince mm-hmm. Philip and, and Elizabeth. Is it them? It, you are correct. It does pertain to them. Uh, is it? Um, uh, his Highness uh, the Duke of Edinburgh being in hospital recently. Uh, it is not about that. No, it. But it is about. Is it that they're secretly cousins? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it no. It it is. It is exactly that. Um. Uh yes, they well wow. not so secretly, but they are in <laughs> fact third cousins. Uh yes. Um the uh the Queen and Prince Philip are third cousins as they share a great great grandmother, and that great great grandmother is Queen Victoria, who reigned from eighteen thirty seven ah. to yes, to nineteen oh one. Um so yes. I see no disadvantages to this at all. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that uh, that is that. They are both third cousins, and Tristan, you do get a point for that. Uh, so. Hooray. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that is the song game over, and now... Uh, my creative question to you guys was, uh, why do the royal family not use the words perfume or toilet? And, uh, I'm just going to spin my wheel. And, uh, George, if you could go first. Well, my first thoughts were, oh, it's probably French, that's why they didn't use it. Who likes the French? <laughs> then I thought, one step further, what's even worse than the French? And I thought, the EU. <laughs> um, so my, my thoughts are that under European Convention, under EU law, as you know, before Brexit, um, it took precedent over UK domestic law. Um, so I thought that it could have been that under EU law, um, the words perfume and toilet were just banned for people, and the royals were simply setting an example <laughs> to us all how to act that we shouldn't use these vulgar words. Right. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh... Not quite, um, but very good. Uh, lovely stuff. And uh, uh, Joe, what do you think? Well, I'm not going for the right answer, by the way. I'm going for the most creative. Oh, yeah. um, I'm members of the royal family. They probably have access to all of the state-of-the-art research that is currently being done by scientists at the moment. So... As well as all of the advantageous abilities, like immortality that they have. <laughs> they re- they receive genes that basically allow them to smell good naturally and never need to go to the toilet. I mean it's why they don't I mean it's why they don't have toilets in the royal palace. <laughs> so therefore never having to actually use perfume and toilets kind of introduces like a like a, um, it makes them feel more superior than <laughs> others. By so they so they decide never to actually say the word perfume and toilets because it just puts everyone else down. Basically, <laughs> yes, that is what they like doing. Uh, so <laughs> uh, the right answer. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Not quite, but very good. I know. <laughs> um, and finally, Tristan, what do you think? Well, I, I think that was the very compelling <laughs> theory from Joe just then. Uh, I, I was going to suspect something <laughs> similar myself, but actually, I've come to a different conclusion, which is 
toilets and perfumes, they, they're very associated with smells and odours. And um, mm. as anyone who knows anything about comedy will tell you, smells are very, very <laughs> funny. There are lots of jokes about farts and, you know, toilets, things like that. Well, the royal family... They are allergic to to humor. They they can't <laughs> stomach anything funny. So they are they are so repulsed by the idea of joy that they have to ban the use of these words lest they inadvertently mention them and someone starts chuckling, which would be unacceptable in the presence of the queen. We've already established earlier, didn't we, George, that, that you're certainly not allowed to address the queen without being addressed first. Well, you can't laugh in her presence because she hates happiness and joy. That's, rubbish. That's my answer. Yes, it's true. It's so rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> they have a cracking sense of humour if you've watched the media over the years. Uh, sounds like a scam to me. Better than my better than my stand up sets. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't that difficult. <laughs> oh. oh, that's not true. I mean, that's not true. They're, 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 they're allergic to humour, and I know you're not, George, despite your love of the royals. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the Queen to join Lucy. That's what I want. My life, my life would be complete. <laughs> uh, lovely stuff. Well, um, uh, those are our four answers and no, four answers. Sorry, um, three answers. Uh, the, the, but Brooklyn... the queen chipped in with her own answer. <laughs> mm, yes, <laughs> I want to join Lucy. Um, uh, but uh, 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 so now, um. I must say, uh, I would give my point to the most creative answer, but I must say that George actually did give the correct answer. In, did I? Uh, what? He, n yes, not in the part where he said it was an EU regulation, but where he said... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> where he said uh, that um, they dislike using the words because the word the words have French origins. That is exactly why they dislike using the words. Um, tra traditionally, they have avoided those words because of their French roots. So it's just a, a bit of royal bigotry. Because because they're German. They're German, the royals. So, you know, they probably have a bit of baggage. I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> no, no, that's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, yes, yes. Um, so that uh, that is the reason. So, George, you do get two points there. Lovely. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so George, you're on five points. Tristan, you're on four points. And I'm afraid, Joe, you are actually uh, on... Oh, um, well, uh, now, who, whose speech did I like the most? It was um, it was Tristan's, wasn't it? And, yeah. uh, and Joe, were you should have said it for Tristan. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Oh right. In that case, Joe, Joe, you, you. I thought you had zero points, but you actually get one point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I have zero points. I'll, I'll, I'll um, accept. <laughs> well. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thank you. Uh, so. So that is the creative answers round, and now I just have one more round. Uh, for my lovely contestants, before the episode is a wrap. And um, it is the made-up quotes round that we're now going to play. So, Ooh. yes. So, I'm going to read out uh, three quotes from Queen Victoria, two of which will be made up, one of which... No, um, no sorry, two of which will be real, one of which will be made up, and uh, then I'm going to read out three quotes from Prince Philip, two of which are real, one of which is made up, and uh, for for each um, each round, 
you guys are going to guess which is the made up one. So we'll do the Queen Victoria from uh, quotes first. The first quote from Queen Victoria is, We women are not made for governing, and if we are good women, we must dislike these masculine occupations. That's quote one. Quote two. My husband Albert surely has the finest moustache in all England. <laughs> and quote three. A marriage is a solemn act and generally a sad one. So yes. <laughs> I'm going to post those quotes in the general chat, uh, and um, so yes, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, which, which one is the uh, false one? Which one, uh, which one reeks the most of John Lee writership? I I I have a theory. I think that the uh, the made up one. Is uh, marriage is a solemn act one? Uh, I think that uh, although it could conceivably have been said by her, I, I'm more convinced that she said some stuff about women and moustaches. Right. Interesting. I think um, it's the my husband Albert surely has the finest moustache in all England. I think. That's the made up one. Do you doubt his moustache, George? <laughs> no. But I, I, the use of the word surely has me wondering. Oh. So the, the, the others are quite eloquently put, the way a royal would. But my husband Albert, yeah, surely he is. A <laughs> you know, it, it just, you know, it just, yeah. That's more something I'd hear in the, in the line for Greg's waiting to get a sausage roll <laughs> than I than I would in, in the in the court of Hampton. <laughs> yes, yes, like the word defo. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I'm, I'm I'm surprised there's not an XOX at the end of that one. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. For sure he has. Fight me, mate. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Right. Um. And Joe, what do you think? Um. I'm probably gonna get no points here, but I'm gonna go. We women are not made for good, and we're not doing the one that's. No, no. Right. Okay. Yes. The so the sexist one. Uh well one of uh, yes, the the yes, the sexist. So fair enough. Uh well uh are we so so we we're, we're all we we're, we're all going for uh three different ones. Uh so Joe you're going yep. for uh the we women are not made for governing. Tristan is going for the marriage being a solemn act, and George is going for yep. the moustache one. Are we all Watch that? Okie cokey. Um, Absolutely. Uh, the point goes to George. Oh yes. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, Gosh. I can't believe she didn't commend his moustache. <laughs> That's disgraceful. <laughs> Perhaps that's why her marriage didn't work. Then <laughs> that's why it was a sad I, one. I, I knew, I knew she'd said the um, the one about women. I did know that that quote. Right? Are oh, you sly, sly man? Sorry, I'm I'm a history student. Oh. What can I say? <laughs> oh. oh bloody hell! Uh, yes, yes. Well, so. Um, uh, yes, the point goes to George. And now, now for one, uh, from Prince Philip. We, I'm going to read out three <laughs> Prince Philip quotes. And, uh, uh, yes, and one, one of them is going to be false. So, the first one. I wish the Germans would do one last blitzkrieg and Bomb that great ugly building to rubble. The second one. <laughs> the second one is, you're too fat to be an astronaut. And <laughs> <laughs> and the third one. If I were reincarnated, 
I would wish to be returned to Earth as a killer virus to lower human population levels. Is it who, who will be saying said these, sorry? Prince Philip. Oh, well, you could have said any of these. I love <laughs> yeah, I believe any of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, George, how are you going to explain the ones that are, that are true <laughs> as, as the royal apology? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this just says he's got a sense of humour. <laughs> Wait, I want to know which one George is hoping is made up. Oh. Mm. What, what, what great ugly building is he describing? Well, I would say the bottom one is the made up one. Actually, I reckon that one's definitely true. I, I'm thinking that it's true. I'm I, thinking I it would like... probably, probably be a recent one, and then everybody, it would be in like news articles everywhere. Mm. I reckon he said mm. it decades ago. And I don't. I, I reckon... don't. So uh, I, can imagine, I can imagine him saying that. I, I'm sure he would believe in lowering human population. It is I great. reckon, having watched clips of Prince Philip and his humour, I think it could be that you're too fat to be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think that's just... He's quite blunt when he talks to people. I think it's just great, straight to the point. Um, and I, I'm going to go with it's you're too fat. Well, it's it's it's... It's we're we're looking for the for the quote which is made up, not not oh, not the quote. Oh yes, oh, yes I see my mistake. Yeah. <laughs> no 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 worries. Um yes okay so um yeah which, which which one is made up? Do do we think? I I have a theory and I'm gonna say that I think the one that's made up is the one about the Germans. Because I, I, I definitely think he would have told someone they're too fat to be an astronaut. That just feels like something he'd just say without thinking, off the cuff. Yeah. And um, the, the, the killer virus one, that's just too good not to be true. So that's why I'm going with the, the <laughs> Germans one. But oh. it's still believable. It's a very good job if it is, if it is the one that you made oh. up. Oh, thank you. Lovely. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, wh- what do other people think? Gosh, I think the made-up one is the one like the Germans, <laughs> because I think that just would not go down very well at all. Interesting. Yes. Mm. Sound logic, sound logic. And uh, Joe, what do you think? Um, the reincarnated one. Right, I mm. can I can think that Prince Philip would be the first one and the second one. But mm. if it wasn't for the pandemic, I really doubt he would have said the last one. And if he did say the last one, I imagine news articles everywhere would be picking up on it and like just like mm. I would, we would have seen something about it in the pandemic mm. and we have so I'm going to say the last one but fair. right F- fair enough well uh okie dokie so uh George and Tristan are both going for the first one and Joe is going for the last one. Are we all going to... Oh, oh no, Tristan left. Oh, no, he's back. Uh, lovely stuff. So, uh, are we all going to stick with those answers? Yep. Yes, sir. Awesome. Right, okay. Um. Well, the correct answer is... The German one. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah. Yes, indeed. Well done to both of you. Uh, so... <laughs> so he has said someone's too fat to be an astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh. more bothered by that than the than the killer virus one. How do you explain that, George? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> um, well, I think I think it was a uh, kind of things comments like that have been made throughout the past, haven't they? I mean, if you look at the office, there's a scene where Dwight says he wishes a plague would wipe out you. Uh, uh, kind of <laughs> groups of humanity because the world is overpopulated. So again, comedy. That's um, comedy. 
<laughs> ah, yes, comedy. <laughs> well, I have a theory actually that uh, that 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 came true. That that the Prince Philip that we know, <laughs> the sort of husk, he's not really Prince <laughs> Philip. He's just mm. a husk. And mm. the real Prince Philip has been reincarnated <laughs> as a kid. That's, it's a bit like Christ, really. So anyone that's catching COVID, it's, it's a bit like having Jesus within <laughs> you, isn't it? That religious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, although Tristan probably does not see Philip as Christ. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I don't. <laughs> He's, he will be within us all. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh well. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, so, so that is that is the end of that round, and that is actually the end of Talk of the Devil this this episode. Um. Uh. So yes. Uh. Uh. Yes. So uh, the points. Uh, we have in last place, Joe. Uh, with uh, <laughs> uh with one point. Uh. Congratulations. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Tristan with five points. Congratulations. Um, and we have George with seven points. Uh, our winner. Thank you. V- a victory for the crown. <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> This, out of all talk of the devils I wanted to win this was probably the one <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. oh yes oh lovely well <laughs> there we are um, so yes uh, that is the end of talk of the devil uh, and uh, yes thank you very much guys for, for coming uh, so uh, that uh, uh, we, we, we shall now just uh go around and say our goodbyes so um yes uh let me randomize my list uh tristan do say goodbye um goodbye <laughs> thank you very much i i don't i i don't know i i i don't know what i'm hoping people will say when i ask them to say goodbye so <laughs> that that is perfectly fine we uh, could sing a song Goodbye, farewell, adieu, good night. <laughs> that song from the Sound of Music. I don't know the words. You see, that's the problem. <laughs> oh yes, I know that. I know the song you mean. Um, well, I mean we could try it. Uh, but it would be. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe maybe we shall save it till the music. Um, themed episode of Talk of the Devil. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yes, George, say goodbye. Um, goodbye. God save the Queen and <laughs> long live the Queen. Thank you very much. And Joe. Hi. <laughs> was that, a, was that <laughs> a hi or a bye? That's a hi. Oh. <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> Well, this is a twist. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. Oh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, see you sometime soon to our audience. Yes, lovely stuff. And you. <laughs>